I hope you, you received the elements when you came in, the communion. Um, if not, you can get those back there in the entranceway or from an usher. Um, but like I said, we're going to start our service with a few songs. And these songs specifically talk about how much God loves us. So we'd love if you'd stand, you'd sing with us, and Savannah's going to help us out with this first song. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my turn Till I met you I was breathing but not Alive. All my failures I try to hide. It was my turn till I met you. You called my name. Citizen of heaven When I was broken You were my healing Now your love is the air that I'm breathing I have a future My eyes are open You, you called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glory
but we're gonna sing one more verse of this song. And as we do, what I'd love for us to do is prepare our hearts for communion with this verse, to take a moment and pause, to remember how much God loves us, to prepare our hearts for communion where we remember Jesus' sacrifice for us. So however that looks for you, whether that's you make this a prayer, you sing these words out really loudly, you encourage somebody next to you with these words, let's prepare our hearts for communion with this last verse. If you don't have the communion elements and you want to partake this morning, ushers will be walking down the aisle. You can feel free to put your hand up and grab them. Uh, communion is an amazing opportunity to remember and reflect on what we just sang about. The sacrifice of Jesus, the self-sacrifice, laying his life down, pouring out his full life so that we would understand how deep and wide the love of God is. There's a line in there, why should I benefit from his reward? Now, it's not only just a remembrance of his death, but it's a remembrance that of his resurrection, his new life. And the new covenant that we're gonna read about in just a second is a promise, an extension to you that you get to benefit from all that he has done. When we take this in, it's symbolic of taking in the resurrection, the life, the new life that God offers us because of how much he loves us and accepts us. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna read from 1 Corinthians, which is tradition in the church, and then we'll take communion together. Paul writes, the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. So if you will, on the bottom part of the cup, you can open it up. There's a wafer in there. This symbolizes the wounds, the pain, the suffering in his body that he undertook to demonstrate the depth of his love. Let's take and eat together. He goes on and says, in the same way after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you drink, eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Not only do you proclaim his death, but you proclaim his life, his resurrection, taking it into ourselves. So let us open the juice, drink together.
how deep the Father's love for you. That he would extend grace and love and acceptance that no matter what you have done, you are welcomed into his family, into his presence, into his arms. This next song, and we're going to invite you to stand and sing with us, is called Good, Good Father. Use this as a reminder of how good God is, even in the midst of the storm when it seems like all else is falling loose. We're praying that God, your eyes would be open to see how good God is. So if you will stand and sing this final song with us.
You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Father God, we are humbled by the fact that you love us. All great and powerful as you are, you look down and you smile upon us. God, help us to see you and your ways, to walk in them that we might experience the life, the better life that you are calling us to. Thank you for that in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys, you may be seated. I'm Brian, grateful to have you here this morning at Grace Community Church. Um, last week, we mentioned that groups are coming, community groups are coming this fall. And we're really excited about that because we believe that in community is one of the best places that we can grow spiritually, but also feel more connected to life. And we talked about how almost 200 new people have come to Grace since we've moved to this location, and we need places for them to connect in community. And I want to say thank you, first of all, for everybody who signed up to help host or lead a community group next week. We had a number of people do that. If you're still on the fence or you're interested or you want more information about leading a community group, I really encourage you to hit the link on the screen or find me out in the lobby. There's a sign-up sheet out there. You'll discover, as so many of our leaders have, that leading a group is one of the best ways to feel connected to a community, but also to grow spiritually. So it's a huge benefit for you, but it also helps the more than two or almost 200 people that have come to Grace that are looking for a place to connect. Now, if you're like, okay, that's definitely not me, that's fine. What I want you to do is mark it on your date in the next three weeks. We're gonna be opening up group signups for you to get connected, where you can just show up, join in the conversation and see God do some really cool stuff in your life. And you can find out more information about that at trygrace.org slash groups. Um, today, Pastor John is continuing in the series called Better with today's message on better boundaries. Thanks for being here. Good morning, everybody. I don't know when I'm supposed to start, but anyway, good morning, everybody. Great to see you today. Hey, uh, a number of years ago, a buddy of mine that's been coming to Grace for a long time introduced me to a friend of his up in Baltimore. This guy from Baltimore was a club guy. He's a big time party guy. Actually, he was a Magic Mike kind of guy. So uh, those of you who don't know what Magic Mike is or who, Ma this is not Magic Mike here. This is my son, Jonathan, by the way. But, but, but if you see somebody laughing, like, then ask them who Magic Mike is and they'll explain it to you, okay? It's a good way to get to know somebody. Anyway, this guy, you know, somebody introduced him to, to Jesus and slowly but surely his life like radically changed. It's a huge part. And he started going to a big mega church up in Baltimore. And then he realized after a while, oh my gosh, all, all the people I'm in acquaintance, he's like in his late 20s, they were all going out Saturday night and they were just partying hard like he used to and then going to church the next morning and they had regrets. And so he had this idea since he was a big time party club guy. He says, I'm gonna write out some of the coolest clubs in Baltimore and I'm going to create an atmosphere where we can have a night without regret, reg regrets, hard to say, night without regrets. And that just, when we moved into this space, I'm like, oh my gosh, Maybe we could do something like that. Maybe we could bring in special artists and singers and speakers and comedians and on and on and on. And we want to talk to you real briefly about that this morning. Matter of fact, my son Jonathan's going to uh, say that, so I'm just going to step out of the way and let him take care of it. Well, thank you, Dad, for that great introduction. Um, <laughs> so uh, we, a couple of weeks ago, announced our first concert coming to Grace. It's with a group called Unspoken, and uh, tickets have sold incredibly well. It's happening on Saturday, September 30th. We're already over 50% sold out. But we had been putting out, I've been sending out emails just sharing about the mission of grace with a lot of artists and agents and uh, got an email um, uh, a few weeks back. And again, Unspoken was supposed to be our grand opening concert, but it was from uh, the agent of an artist that said, hey, um, we just headlined an arena in Northern Virginia uh, a few months ago, but we want to come and do something really special here at Grace in an intimate setting. And uh, without further ado, here is the announcement. 
So Torin Wells is a 10-time Grammy-nominated artist. He has toured with Mariah Carey as well as Derek's favorite, Lionel Richie. Uh, he, has, uh, he, he has numerous uh, platinum and gold certified singles and, uh, again, just headlined an arena earlier this year. Uh, but he is coming to Grace. He has collaborations with her, to Crowder, to Elevation Worship. And uh, he is coming to Grace on Sunday, September 24th. It is going to be announced on the radio and on social media and his platform here soon, but we wanted to give Grace uh, the first shot at tickets because this will definitely sell out. So uh, it's available now at eventbrite.com. Um, you can access them or I will have a lobby uh, booth in the lobby after the service and would love to meet you and answer any questions you have. Thank you so much. All right. That's awesome. Well, for those of you who've been around for like a long time uh, here at Grace, over 10 years kind of around for a long time at Grace, um, we did something. I had no idea why we were doing it when my son was still in high school, like when he was 15, put together this huge music festival unbeknownst to us. Like he was making phone calls in his room that we didn't know about. And at school, he would go into the bathroom and he, I, his top band, I think, was P.O.D. that he brought in. And it was just this huge undertaking. And I felt so, why are we doing this? Why, you know, and the church kind of rallied around and did it. Well, here we are over 10 years later. And now he has all these contacts with these big name music groups who would never come and play a space that only has 500 people. But now we're able to get that. So, okay. All right. So it eventually paid off. But uh, I had no idea where it was going at the time. Anybody know what that's like when you, like, you don't know where this is going? Okay. All right. I had no idea uh, where where this was going. Uh, anyway, all right, uh, better, better boundaries. That's what we're talking about today, better boundaries. Well, Krista and I, a number of months ago, we went to Opelika, Alabama. Opelika, Alabama. Somebody from Opelika over here? Thank you very much. I'd never been there before. Uh, and so we went down to Opelika because it was a family that had been here for a very long time at Grace, and they moved down there, and now their oldest daughter is getting married. So we go down there, and uh, we fly into Atlanta. We get a rental car. We're in a hurry because... I, it's not good for me to be late to weddings. It really freaks everybody out. And so we're rushing to get there. And you know when you rent a rental, a rental car, it has all the new stuff on it, all the gadgets like that our car doesn't have on it? What well, had this thing, when you start to get close to the line, the lane divides, the boundaries, when you start to get close, even close, forget crossing it, just close, it starts beeping at you right, in a really, really annoying way. You're beep, 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 right? And I didn't take the time to figure out how to cut the thing off. I figured we'd figure out how to do that. I'm like, Krista, just make that thing stop. And it's just annoying me so bad. Think about this, though, everybody. The people who created that little gadget device, the beep, 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 they didn't do it to annoy us. They did it so that we would have a better driving experience. You know, you know what I'm saying? So that if you got close to the boundary, you'd have a better... Has anybody ever had a wreck? Anybody here ever had a wreck? Anybody? Gosh, okay, you guys are great drivers. Like, hardly anybody in this room has had a wreck. Man, when you have a wreck, like, it wrecks your day. Matter of fact, it'll wreck your whole month because then you got to deal with a rental car company to get a car and they got to fix it, and insurance phone calls and all this stuff. And it's just a huge problem, okay? And if you get hurt, it might wreck your whole year. I mean, it's terrible. Wrecks are terrible. So the people who created this gadget, like, would beep when you got close to that boundary line, they did not do that so that it would annoy you. They did it so you'd have a better driving experience. Now, Jesus is really into boundaries, and this is what we're going to talk about today. Jesus is really into boundaries. He really wants you to respect certain boundaries, not so that it would annoy you, but so that you would have a better life. And that's the series we're in, how to have a better life. Well, you got to have better boundaries to have a better life. Uh, here's, the, here's the thing that got me. And I saw this years ago. There's one common ingredient that all healthy relationships have in common. One common, one common. What is it? They have healthy boundaries. We need to have clear boundaries, wise boundaries, healthy boundaries, so that we can have a better life. Clear boundaries with clear consequences. This is what we want to talk about this morning. So I've got my shirt. I finally got my shirt. I wanted this shirt. Derek came out, I don't know, was it five weeks ago? I had the shirt on. I asked for a shirt. He wouldn't let me get a shirt. Jesus makes life better, right? He's just British that way. He just holds on to stuff. So I finally got my shirt this week, and so I'm thrilled to be wearing it. Yeah, he's tough. He's tough. He's tough to deal with. And then Joe Burrow got carted off the practice field this past week, so he's really had a bad attitude, okay? But uh, I finally got my shirt. I'm, I'm thrilled to have it on. Jesus wants us to have great boundaries so we can have a great life. When boundaries are set, we minimize our regrets. 
This is what we're going to talk about this morning. Now, our world is filled with boundaries. Boundaries are all over the place in our world. We have fences. We have guardrails on the highways. We have walls. There's signs all over the place about danger. Slow down. Drive like your kids live here. And of course, we have speed limit signs that for some reason human beings are unable with our eyes to see, right? But we have all these things that are about boundaries, and they're there for us to have a better life. Now, I'd like you to check out this proverb. Proverbs is all about wisdom. Check out what this proverb says, okay? It's really good. Proverbs 25, 28, 28. People who cannot control themselves, what are they like, everybody? They're like cities without walls to protect them. What did that mean back when that was written? Well, if you had a city and you didn't have walls, that means anybody can do, come in and do anything that they want at any time that they want. And that is very dangerous. There's physical problems with that. There's emotional problems with that. There's just a whole host of issues with that. You have to have the walls in order to protect you. Now, Proverbs is famous for wisdom. And the purpose of biblical wisdom is this. In a nutshell, here's the definition of biblical wisdom. It's how to have a better life. That is what this famous proverb is showing us, how to have this better life, specifically self-control. This proverb is talking about the importance of self-control, this skill, this virtue, this very important part of our lives. Now, I want to say something about self-control that I don't always see. I want to show you a diagram up here because when I think about self-control, I think about it in one very specific way. I think about self-control by what I let out, which is what we talk about most of the time around here. The words that I speak, I got to bite my tongue, got to watch my behavior, I got to watch my attitude. I think about self-control of me controlling what I'm letting out. That's only half of the equation, everybody. This is what we're going to focus on today. It's about what you let in. See, this proverb is a lot about what you let in inside of your city. What boundaries have you set? What are you allowing to be done inside of your life, inside of your city that could be harmful to you? And Jesus is very, very interested in this. We have to set up clear boundaries so that we do not pay a price and experience a nasty regret in our life. Now, you know what a good boundary is? It's summertime. What a good boundary is is sunscreen. Sunscreen, that's a great boundary. We need sunscreen. When you go outside, you need sunscreen to protect you from the harmful rays of the sun. If you don't put a boundary, a barrier of sunscreen all over you and you're out in the sun, what happens? You get skin cancer. You could die from skin cancer. Or... They might have to take a piece, take a knife, a scalpel, and cut out a piece of your skin. You have to have a barrier. Barriers are healthy and barriers are good. So this is what we're going to talk about this morning. I want to show you a book that I read uh, a number of weeks ago by Lisa Turker. She's a pretty popular uh, writer. It's called Good Boundaries and Goodbyes. I would highly recommend that you read this book gives you some really important practical things to think about, some good... She actually writes it with her therapist about this. I'm going to describe boundaries real quick, okay? What are boundaries? They're rules. They're guidelines. They're limits. They represent respect. There's a mutual understanding that leads to mutual respect. They can be physical, emotional, verbal, digital, et cetera, et cetera. Now, we have some common modern-day... Words of wisdom, proverbs that speak to the importance of boundaries. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the beginning, and let's see if you can complete the last word, but they're all about boundaries. All right, ready? Honesty is the best. That's a, So no line. Our boundary is there won't be line. That's what that common proverb is saying. How about this one? Actions speak louder than words. words. Yes, right. You can hang it. Get in the hang of it. Okay, how about this last one? Better late than Okay, these are boundaries. These are things that maybe you would agree upon with somebody else. All right, boundaries can be, for example, there'll be no lying in our relationship. There'll be no yelling in our relationship. There'll be no manipulating in our relationship. There'll be no threatening in our relationship. You can't be overspending in our relationship, and you can't be hiding things from me in our relationship. There's no shutting down. There's no walking away. There's no 
not addressing the problem. We have to address it. These are all examples of maybe boundaries that you might set in a friendship or a family relationship or even in a work environment so that things can go well, so that you can have a better life. There's no getting high. There's no getting drunk. There's no watching porn. A boundary is never, ever, ever taken seriously unless there's a clear consequence. So if you set a boundary, hey, here's the boundary, okay, we agree upon it, but there's no consequence ever given, it's just a joke. It's just a joke. There has to be a clear boundary with a clear consequence. Now, I said uh, in this book, she writes it along with her therapist, and the therapist tells you know, a, really, a really good story about this. This is very practical. This is, you know, you're having a conversation with somebody, and you have already made these, uh, you've already made these boundaries, okay? And now you've got to have a clear consequence. So let's say you've made the boundary that there'll be no yelling or screaming or demeaning comments or disrespectful comments when you're in the middle of a conflict, right? Look, we all act very juvenile when we're in the middle of conflict. How many times have you looked back after you had a conflict? It's like, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. I hope nobody recorded that. You know, you know what I'm saying? We act very juvenile. It's, it's our brains. It's our brains. That's what happens. Our brains get hijacked. There's a part of our brain. We get all amped up, okay? So here's the consequence, all right? So when that starts to happen, then both of you have to know the consequence will be that we have to take a time out. Like I can't get one last jab in, verbal jab as they walk away. I got to take a breath, take a time out. And the therapist is really big on breathing to kind of reactivate the good part of your brain to think, right? Have a glass of water, take 20 minutes. And you have to come back together and talk about it. You have to come back together and talk about it. Now, if somebody is a repeat offender of breaking the boundary, what do you do? What's the consequence on that? Paul, who writes a lot of the Bible, is writing to his young protege, and his name is Timothy. And he says, Timothy, and Timothy, no, Titus, in Titus chapter three, he's writing to him, and he's saying, he says to him, warn, check this out, warn a divisive person, warn somebody who's breaking a boundary, warn that person once, warn them a second time, and then after that, and do you know how he ends it? Does anybody know how he ends that, that verse of scripture? After that, what? Warn them once, warn them twice, and then after that, have nothing to do with them. Now, that's a clear consequence. <laughs> that's a clear consequence. And some of us are like, oh, no, no, Jesus, you know, Jesus wants me to like always forgive and always believe and all of that. Okay, okay. That's not what Jesus is saying. And this is what we need to talk about this morning. Because if we don't have healthy, clear boundaries with clear consequences, we will live a life filled with regrets, right? Filled with regrets. And that is something that Jesus does not want us to do. I want to do one last thing uh, from the book. She asks a bunch of questions in the book. I'm going to narrow it down to just three. Is there a relationship in your life somewhere, somewhere, right? Personal, professional, whatever, where you're constantly walking on eggshells? Is there a place in your life, a relationship in your life where you're constantly walking on eggshells? Check this one out. Ask yourself this. Do you spend more time trying to save the relationship than enjoying the relationship? Are they resistant to changing a behavior even though they know it is hurting you? Now, she has a lot of great questions. I had a whole string of them, and staff told me to cut a bunch of them out, but you can read the book, and I encourage you to do that because there's a lot of great questions in there. I love the one where it says, are you in love with their potential rather than who they are right now? That's a problem. That's a big problem. I'll say this one last thing. The wise people, and I hope you have wise people who love you in your life, are you hiding the relationship in some way, shape, or fashion from them? Because if they knew about what was going on in the relationship, they'd say, oh, no, 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 no. Are you hiding it because of that? Are you being wide open with the people who love you and the wise people in your life? That's a big problem. Ask yourself these questions. What is going on in this relationship? Well, Lisa Turkhurst um, faced a lot of boundaries being broken in her life. Like for years, she thought with her own husband, and she talks about a lot of boundary issues, but with her husband, who was re a repeat offender over and over and over again, and lying and cheating, and the whole nine yards that goes with that. And she thought, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm a, I, I'm a church person. I've been in church all my life. I'm a Jesus person. I just gotta, I gotta love, and I gotta forgive, and I gotta believe. 
leave and the boundary was broken and it's broken and it's broken. And man, it was terrible. You know what? It cost her. It cost her deeply. She says that it actually, it landed. She talks about it in the book. It landed her in the ICU and it almost killed her. The doctor said when they opened, because it just twisted her, her, her stomach, her guts, her intestines all around. Doctor said this, says, when we opened you up, I thought you'd been hit by a bus. That's what you looked like on the inside. That's what emotional stress will do to you. And she finally got to a place after many years, many years, too many years. And this is what I'm trying to really focus on today. Can we save ourselves from so many years of regret? Can we save ourselves from so many years of regret by having clear boundaries with clear consequences? She just lost so much time and, and just so much heartache and scars and pain to her own life because she didn't follow it. Now, uh, on a personal level, my own mom, and, and this, is, uh, this, is real, this haunts me, this is really painful to me. My mom put up with uh, and hid, because she's such a giving, loving person, hid... Um, what somebody uh, was doing to her for many, many years uh, from the rest of the family. And she had hopes and she you know, saw the potential and she thought, oh my gosh, surely this person will change. And they, they didn't change. And now after decades of hiding it and putting up with it, finally it's like, that's it. But now my mom is in her 60s and here's what she said, and I'll never forget this. She said this to me years ago. She said, I gave away the best years of my life. That can't happen. That can't happen for you. That cannot, that should not, should not, should not happen to you. Jesus does not want that to happen to you. Clear boundaries, clear consequences, a life where you minimize regrets. This is what we're after here this morning. It is super important, okay? Because it can really devastate your life. Now, what does Jesus specifically say about boundaries? He says a lot about boundaries. And the Bible is filled with boundaries. I'm going to give you three verses of scripture where Jesus talks about boundaries. And this first one, you know, for years, I only looked at it one way, but this is what Jesus says. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. Now, I don't know about you, but here's where I focus. I focus on the neighbor. Oh yeah, I got to love my neighbor. Oh yeah, I got to love my neighbor. But that last part, right? As yourself, I skip over that. And what Jesus is talking about here is, you know, when we think about the way somebody would treat their neighbor, a lot of times we'll allow somebody to treat us in just terrible ways, but we would never agree that anybody else should be treated that way. Jesus is talking about self-care. How good are you at setting boundaries? Does your city, your life have walls around it so that you're not being mistreated? Are you loving yourself? So here is my question for you today. First question is, are you loving yourself? Ask yourself that. Am I loving myself in this relationship? Do I have the clear boundaries in place that I don't suffer these regrets? It's really important. Now, let me give you uh, a couple more scriptures, two more scriptures that Jesus says. Check this out. Jesus, this is Jesus. He's the loving and forgiving person. And this is after his first uh, miracle at the wedding of Cana. It says, but Jesus would not entrust himself to them. There was a bunch of people because Jesus was the flavor of the month right now. I mean, he's cool. He's done a miracle and everybody's flocking around him. But Jesus knew what was in people's hearts and he would not entrust them. Look, if you're going to allow if somebody to come into your life and you're going to trust them, it means you are giving them access to your life, to your heart, to break your heart, to scar your heart, to scar your life, to hurt you. And, and that access is a privilege. It's a privilege. Don't let them inside of your walls until they've been vetted a little bit, until they've earned that. And Jesus is saying, he's not gonna, he's not gonna let them inside. He's not gonna do it because they are going to hurt. Check out what he says in the famous Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter seven. Do not give dogs what is sacred? Your life is sacred. The Bible says that from start to finish. Your life is sacred. And so Jesus is, Throwing out a verbal like, wake up, ho. Don't give to dogs. Don't give it to people who you can't trust. Don't give it to people who break your heart. What is sacred? Your life. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Here's the question. 
Am I protecting myself? Are you protecting yourself? Have you put up those clear boundaries? Are there walls around your city or are there just no walls around your city? And anybody can come in at any time and do anything that they want to do. Do you have wise boundaries in place? Do you have clear consequences when those boundaries are broken? Healthy people respect healthy boundaries. When you talk to somebody in your relationship with them, you're like, hey, we should have this boundary. If they're healthy, they will say, yes, yeah, that makes sense. Let's talk about it and let's act upon it. If they're unhealthy, here's what happens a lot of times. They might agree to it in the moment, but later unhealthy people will blame and shame. They'll make you feel crazy. You hear this so often where people repeatedly break a boundary like they flip the script on you and they make you feel like you're the insane one, like somehow you've done something wrong. Unhealthy people like to blame and shame. Now, everybody this morning, we need to stop managing our problems. We need to stop managing, like shuffling stuff around the deck. No, stop managing it and start addressing it. God, Jesus wants you. Jesus makes life better. Jesus wants you to stop managing your problem, and start addressing the issue with clear boundaries and clear consequences. Jesus is very excited for you to do that. Why? Because Jesus loves you. Every boundary that you find in the Bible, Jesus does not give it out of a spirit of, you better do this. I'm holy judging God. No, Jesus gives it out of the attitude of a loving parent who loves you so much and just wants nothing, 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 nothing but the best for you. That's how every single boundary is given. Jesus wants to make our life better. Now, everybody, Jesus is awesome. Jesus is the most influential person that has ever walked this planet. Jesus is divine. Jesus is incredible. And Jesus cannot, cannot change your life. Cannot change. There's nothing Jesus can do for you. Zero. Nothing Jesus can do for you. Unless, unless you are willing to allow him to guide you on setting clear boundaries with clear consequences. Then he can transform your life. But he's not gonna just force something upon you. We all have to make that decision. I have to make that decision and you have to make that decision. But I can tell you, he wants the best for you and he wants to make your life so much better. But we're gonna have to do something about it. Clear boundaries, clear consequences. Here's the last thing I'll say. Once boundaries are set, there's no regrets. Boundary set, no regrets. Now, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Could you say that with me? Because I really want you to remember this, not just today, but maybe it'll get up inside of our brains and we'll remember it for a long time. It's so important. We, we shouldn't suffer the regrets that we do in life, the scars. So could we say that boundary set, no regret? One, two, three. Boundary set, no regrets. This is what we want. All right, I want to show you one last thing. It's a picture of somebody. Uh, look at that baby. Look at that baby. You know who that baby is? That baby... When born, 11 pounds, two ounces. That baby's mother was a saint. You know what I'm saying? 11 pounds, two ounces, cute baby. All right, uh, let's look at the next picture. Okay, that person there is the same thing as the same person as that little baby, and that is me. And I don't know how old I am, but I think I'm like 13, 14, or 15. Here's what I want you to think about. Oftentimes, we'll have a lot of compassion for other people, but not a lot of compassion for ourselves. Oftentimes, we'll have wisdom for other people, but not for ourselves. Boundaries, encouragement, we'll lift up. We'll, you know, a lot will say wonderful, loving things. We won't say it to ourselves. I would like for you to put a picture in your mind of yourself right now. Can you do that? Of your younger self. You pick the age. You pick the age. And what would you say to yourself? What I'm going to ask you to do in just a second, I'm going to ask you just to, in your mind, begin to form an outline with bullet points of what you would say and then later to write a letter to your younger self. Because you know what? You, you will say that to your younger self, but you won't say it to yourself now and you need to say it to yourself now. You really do. So for myself, young John here, you know, my, my parents, for whatever reason, they started me in school early. I was always the youngest and I was always the smallest. I was always the youngest and always the smallest and all the stuff that goes along with that happening. And you know what I would say to my younger self? I would say, it's okay. You know, intentionally and unintentionally, I was left out of a lot of stuff, but it's okay. Just, just back up, look around, and there are a lot of friends around you and don't be consumed. I'd like to write that letter to my younger self. Or when I was very, very young in the ministry, very young, like in my early 20s, just that 
infant stage in ministry and just learning and thinking, such a critical stage. And I was really, really hurt and disappointed by leaders in the church, just, just badly. I would like to say to my younger self, hey, look, the stuff that's being done to you, broken people, just like you're broken, and it seems like the end of the world, because when you're right up on a situation, it seems so overwhelming, but if you back up from it a little bit, even though it seems like the end of the world, it's not really the end of the world, and I would like to say to my younger self, it's okay. It's gonna be okay. It seems like the world is crashing down, but it's gonna be okay. What would you say to yourself? You need to say that. And you need to hear that now, and you need to say it to your younger self, and you need to be compassionate to yourself. And you need to tell yourself, it's okay to set boundaries. It's okay. And it's okay to have the consequences, clear consequences of those boundaries. Our prayer team's gonna be right over here. I know that this, you know, this touches a chord for many of us in the room, it definitely does for me. So maybe you'd like somebody to pray with you and our team would love to pray, great, great team. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray now and just ask God to help all of us uh, that we'd be able to set boundaries and we'd be able to minimize our regrets. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for your love. Thank you, Jesus, that the only reason that you give us these boundaries is because you love us so much. Lord, first of all, I ask that you, you would help us to be compassionate to ourselves, to be forgiving to ourselves, that you would heal the wounds inside of us. And there's been many. And then you would help us to set really wise and clear boundaries and that have consequences to them, Lord. Help us as we begin to write these letters to our younger self, which is so helpful. Guide us, Jesus, please, in your name. Amen. Hey, everybody. Oh, thank you. If, if you're new, if you're new, I'd love for you to meet Pastor Derek. Uh, I talked about him earlier. Uh, he, I, he has a better attitude now. <laughs> Joe Burrow is okay, and he'd love to meet you uh, right over here. And again, if the prayer team is right over here. Everybody, thank you so much for being here today. God bless you. We love you. 